Hello again! Well, it's spring! <laughs> Remember, a few weeks ago, I was painting marble and I said I was looking for a feather and I couldn't find one. Well, I went out into my garden today and came across this. Oh dear. <laughs> for a second there, I thought it would, might have been one of my chickens, but no. I think this may be a pigeon but it has been eaten most definitely. Look at all the blood. Okay, well, but the thing is, I am going to pick up a couple of them. I'll have to wash them because they're, it's a bit filthy, but, um, and they're a little bit um, round, the edges, so you'll have to cut them into a little point. I wonder what bird this is. There's blood on them. I'll have to wash my hands. <laughs> there's another one. Well, there's loads of them. But I'll just pick up a couple of them. And uh, the, the ones are not too bloody. Wash them, dry them. Oh well, poor thing. I don't know, maybe it was a cat or, although we do have birds of prey here, small ones, but we do have them and they do like to hunt pigeons. So, because they're a little bit slower and then they just sweep in and just grab them mid-air. So anyway, I think that's enough. I'll wash them and wash my hands too. <laughs> don't want any nasty bugs in the house. So I've just washed them a couple of times. Ah, look at all the dirt that's come out there. But I use boiling water and um, soap and a little bit of bleach. I washed them several times and now they're clean and rinsed them several times. And I'll just dry them. And, uh, well, they should be okay. Here they are, finished, clean. <laughs> um, and the funny thing is they didn't all turn out that well. Uh, these ones that have, especially the ones with the light tops and the dark bottom, they became very thin and, um, yeah, not very good. They might work though. These, I'm I'm thinking these are the, I don't know what they're called in English, but we call them the, like the flight feathers for flying. They, they're okay. They're just a little bit, um, they should be a little bit more pointy. So, when, because when you pick them up, you want to be able to paint with that point. So I'll just cut a little point there. And uh, now that's nice. And now you can use it. And that can be used like a, you know, it, to lift and then put it down again, lift, put it down again. You saw me do that in the marbling video. And where is it here? Now I can use that because I'm, I was working on a little kitchen block. It's not finished yet. I still have to work on the doors and the paint and everything. But this is going to be the top for it, the marbling, marble top, work top. So I have to marble that and uh, that's a good size to make some nice patterns in the marble. So I'll be doing that shortly. I don't know if I'll be doing that tonight, but yeah. 
at least I'm that's what I've been working on. I haven't had much time to do anything else because there were some things going on I needed to pay attention to. So but yeah, got the feathers, so now <laughs> now I can do more marbling. So I've put several base coats on there and the, the, um, the first one was a mistake and I sprayed it um, with uh, a primer and turned out it was a gray primer. It doesn't matter because it's going to be covered, but uh, I thought it was white and it wasn't. So I put on three base coats and now I've put on two coats of uh, acrylic paint and I'm going to go in with the first coat or the first little um, coat a little bit of color and I'm using a sand gray which is a really nice very light and I'm going to mix it with some glazing medium just to uh, Get that little bit of transparency on there. I'm just going to go in with my um, sp natural sponge just to quickly. Now, there is one more thing I wanted to talk to you about, and that's because Susan left a comment on one of my vlogs and it wasn't the one that I showed you last month but it was uh, it did have to do with a with the same room and with the dining table or the table that 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 actually is the flip up table over there in the dining room and she asked so I'm putting a sorry Putting another layer on here. And it is transparent, so you can see. But she asked, um, let me see, why doesn't the dining room table stay up all year? Just curious, because here it does. Well, nowadays, of course, uh, if people have a dining room, the table does stay up. And um, now the Netherlands is a small country, so uh, it also means that houses are a bit smaller. So a lot of people don't have a, a separate dining room as such. But of course, they do have a dining table. Um, and people do eat dinner from the dining, from the, the table, dining room. T well, which is not a dining room, so dinner table uh, but I, I thought it was a very interesting question and I'm not entirely sure and I'm not a historian but um, I think in the middle ages they people would eat especially if no not just especially if you were a part of the nobility you would um, a lot of a lot of times they would eat from uh, large tables that were boards uh, set up on trestles and then after the dinner was finished they would take the boards away again and the room would return to whatever function it had and that's that's the way it, it, it was in the Netherlands as well in the 17th and before that and in the 18th century still they didn't really have a dining room room but the room served several functions and um, so they had this, the, the wealthy people anyway, because if you weren't wealthy, you would well probably eat wherever or in the kitchen. Uh, you know, it would be one 
kitchen that would serve as a dining room as well. Uh, and I think uh, wealthy people would also sometimes eat in the kitchen because they often had a very nice kitchen as well. But anyway, as, as we do now still. Um, but um, dining rooms didn't really exist in the Netherlands. It was a room that served several uh, purposes. So you would it would be more of a they did display their their porcelain and their silver in there in the buffets and they would close them off uh, if the room was not used for eating dinner and then you could i don't know read or study or receive guests or <laughs> in there um but they didn't have dining room tables and it was the same you know they brought in trestles with uh boards and that would be set up with lovely um, tablecloths and be set for dinner and then removed and only for special occasions because if if it wasn't a special occasion or if you had guests or something you would just eat at these small tables like the, the tip till top table I have in there now that's what they did and um, I'm not sure I think probably um, in the 18th century, um, it started to change, and uh, this was after probably the French fashion and uh, English fashion to have a dining room table uh, or a room especially for dining. And um, I also think it is uh, in the Netherlands, it's part of the fact that a lot uh, of the country was, uh, they were Protestants. And uh, Protestants, especially in the north and in the west of the country, um, Protestants were um, always very focused on, um, well, their relation with God, but also um, not to be, uh, to focus on moderation and not to show your wealth. Although I must say they did. It's always a little bit hypocrit hypocritical, I think, because like they wore in the 17th century, they wore these beautiful black suits and black um, wool was, was expensive. You know, it was expensive to make that black dye and uh, to dye it black and keep it in good condition. And those lace collars they used to wear, I mean, that was all incredibly expensive. And you could tell that these people who wore those things were wealthy. So they did show show their wealth in a different way. But um, I think it also applied to food, the moderation. So, uh, um, you know, uh, we don't have a very nice dining culture here or very we're not very culinary in the Netherlands and i i think that may be part of like the 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 protestant uh, way of thinking of you know not being too ostentatious not you know everything in moderation and you know be normal just be act act um, in moderation and there's a big difference with the south of the country where there's a lot more catholics and of course in the catholic faith there are much more there's much more abundance in showing wealth and the churches were decorated and i mean you could you could almost like a like a picture book you could tell the whole biblical story from whatever was um shown in the churches which is very different from a protestant church but there uh in that you can also see the dining culture or the culinary culture is very different in the south they're much more um well it's becoming much less now the difference is becoming much less now but um, uh, in the south they're ver very uh, more sociable and more open and you know they go out a lot more and they have dinners and it, it, there's there's quite a big difference. Um, and I think that has to do with the difference in religion. So <laughs> cultural differences within a small, very small country, which is very funny. But I, uh, like I said, um, we don't 
really have a culinary we're not a great culinary nation uh we don't have fantastic dishes or fantastic dinner parties and so not like france or or you know more the southern european countries so i think that is part of the reason why dining rooms came in quite late in the in the netherlands uh, with a table set up permanently, I, I may be completely ro completely wrong, but that's what that's what I'm thinking. So, if anyone knows the real reason, or the if that is the case, what I'm thinking uh, could be correct. I'm not sure. Um, let me know. <laughs> I'd love to know. I'd love to learn a little bit about that. So let's see. Do a little bit of veining. Need some black. Not too much. Again, some gel medium. And maybe a little bit, mix it with a little bit of grey. Bit of water, don't want it too. Let's see if this how this will do. It's okay, actually. See, so I'm laying it down a little bit, then picking it up, and here you can see that Point made a beautiful fine line. I picked it up a little bit darker. Mm. That looks nice. This this doesn't look too too nice. Oh well, that bit I like. Now, as I'm going on the sides as well, I just have to make sure that I continue with that. there and there as well that makes it look real <laughs> and here a little bit like I said no one's gonna see that but I'm doing it anyway just to Uh, that's a, no one's going to see under there. That's going to be on the. And actually, uh, maybe I'll just do a little bit here because I don't want to do too much. Actually, it's looking rather nice, I must say.
Of course, you don't want to be doing too much. And also, uh, and I said that last time as well, try to, it has to be random more or less. Because if you if if the if it's going to be too much like a pattern or a repeat, it's going to look completely unnatural. Unnatural. So maybe where should I put a little bit here? Maybe. That might be too much already, but uh, I do like how thin it gets. So it does really work. I like that bit as well. Just pick it up a little bit. Here. And there. And there are lots of different marbles, so ah, this is a fantasy one, but uh, you could um, look at real marbles, photos of real marbles, and then um, copy them, because that will make a big difference. Right, there's a bit of a spot. I just need to let that dry a little bit. I'll just cover cover that so it doesn't dry. <laughs> because I like the work. It's like a palette, painter's palette. And um, cover my paints. And let that try. Oh, I forgot to do the this one. Now I still have to cut these in half, or it's somewhere over here. So, this may not be in the right spot. I think that will be okay. And this is going to be close to the, um, the sink, which is a very black. It's not a marble. It's a sand. Um, it's it's a hard stone. It's called Belgian hard stone and a lot of um, hard, not hard, hard stone. I don't know what it's called in English. I actually have the same material on my real sink. Well, not the sink, but the, the countertop. Um, but it was used a lot in the Netherlands. Yeah, I like that. Now you could kind of go maybe here. I think I need to um, cover that a little bit because it's getting a little bit busy and dark. So, but yeah, it's looking nice. And uh, I will probably put a few more layers on there. Actually, that is looking a lot nicer than I expected. So I may not have to do that many la layers. Usually it takes me hours or days because I have to wait till it dries and I'm not happy and I'll do it again. And <sighs> Anyway, 
This is looking pretty good. Okay, I did a few more coats of the glaze with a little bit of white in there over top just to knock back the color a little bit and I worked a little bit in there but I think it's good now and I did the, the side bit as well might need to knock that back a little bit it's a bit dark that's a bit too much I like the top not the side I'll do that but then I'll um, spray a couple of coats of varnish on it to make it nice and smooth and um, I think it will look nice if that's the, uh, the kitchen cabinets you see the black sink not finished yet but um, I like it and there's a tiny bit of uh, beige in there which I think uh, once I varnish it, you'll see it much better. Uh, but I don't want to do it too And I put that in there because of the color of the doors. To pick that up a little bit. So, yeah. I'm happy with that. I'm going to do that. So, that's it for today. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Until next time.